Hello, this is James D'Angelo and welcome to the Bitcoin 101 Blackboard series. And these slides that you're going to see today came from a talk that I gave a few weeks ago at Harvard Business School. Now, to understand most of these killer apps, it's absolutely essential that you understand this idea of smart contracts. And it's not complex at all. And we're going to be looking at a basic contract and that one basic contract can really be applied to almost everything we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so the simplest smart contract really is just an if and a then. Okay, so if I go to school, then I will see my teacher. Just a simple statement where you have an if and then something happens. Almost all contracts, even most legal contracts, are based on these simple ideas. If my partner quits, then the money will be divided this way. If this musician writes this part of the song, then he will get this percentage of the royalties. And this isn't some futuristic dream, this idea that you can have smart contracts. It's already been under development and been working now for a number of months. So a company named Counterparty builds this right on top of Bitcoin's blockchain. But there are other offerings, Ethereum and such, which provide their own blockchains, which allow for smart contracts. So to fully understand this, let's take a look at a bet, which is the simplest of all possible contracts. And right here, we've got pseudocode, so sort of this fake code that I wrote to show the idea of how a smart contract might be implemented in software. And this particular code is based on Harry Potter going to MIT and what might his grades be. And someone wants to make a bet that he's going to get a 4.0 GPA. And let's look into this code so we can get a full idea of what's going on. So here's our if, and this return over here is our then, and here's the bet. If Harry got a 4.0, okay, and then we we have some verification data if Harry, first name, last name, Potter, born on X date, da, 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 all the verification data that you want to put in, if he gets a 4.0. Well, how do we know he gets a 4.0? That's when we rely on something called an oracle. And an oracle is pre-agreed upon. So whoever's making the bet, they're going to agree that this oracle is going to be the thing that's going to make the decision. In this case, it could be MIT's admin registrar right here, which actually publishes his grades online. So you would go to this site and you would have this login key and you would be able to see Harry Potter's grades on the date of graduation. So the oracle in this case would just be MIT. But you could see the Oracle being, say, ESPN in a sports event or thousands of things. So if you don't want to trust just one centralized party, say ESPN, for example, well, you could load up all the sporting sites and then you could have individuals acting as Oracles, providing this information online. And then you would take the majority of them, 95% of them, or even all of them. Whatever you want to put in your bet as the form of agreement is what will happen. So upon Harry Potter's graduation, this code right here will dig into this site right here putting in this login code to check Harry Potter's grades. If he has a 4.0, then we will send 10 units, okay? So this is the payout. It could be dollars, it could be bitcoins, it could be dogecoins, it could be euros, it could be whatever we agree on. Again, as long as we agree beforehand on the bet, well, then we have a nice little contract. Then we will send 10 bitcoins, for example, to this Bitcoin address right here, which is the payee. Okay, so this is the most basic contract and you can add thousands and thousands of lines. You could add conditions, say for example, he dies beforehand or that MIT does not have a grade posted for him so the debt can dissolve. Whatever we wanna put in, we can write in, we can pull contracts offline, use already pre-made contracts, as long as the two parties agree, we have an official bet. And what's really cool about this and why this is revolutionary is the money in a Bitcoin contract or a cryptocurrency contract is placed inside the bet. So you actually put the currency inside a decentralized server that's just sitting there waiting for the bet to resolve. Upon his graduation, if he's got a 4.0, the currency will actually leave the bet and go to the payee. Okay, this is outrageous. Why? Because it doesn't require an escrow. It doesn't require someone to hold that money. It's decentralized. No individual is holding this. So the money is just sitting there in thin air waiting for the bet to be resolved. Okay, so an escrow traditionally, just for a real quick example, say I was making a bet with someone I didn't like over Harry Potter's grades. Well, we would need someone as an escrow to hold the money for us for that bet to actually work properly. Because if I didn't like him and I lost the bet, I'd probably run away with the money and he'd likely do the same. That's why you need a trusted escrow service in traditional betting setups. Well, here, as long as both of us sign away these funds using our private keys, the money sits in waiting to be resolved by the code of the bet. It's a smart contract. 
So as a result, this eliminates the need for counterparty risk. Here, I might be worried about the person I bet with trying to leave with the funds. Also, I might be worried about the escrow service leaving with the funds or not making the correct decision. These are counterparty risks that you have when you're placing any sort of bet. And here we've just got our quick definitions of escrow and quick definitions of counterparty, but you're starting to get an idea of how these simple, simple contracts work. But here in this cool post by this guy named Foolish Austrian here on Reddit, we see this idea that we're not going to need a third party or a counterparty in so many places. And this is where this individual is seeing Bitcoin explode, right? So let's go through his post real quickly. If successful, Bitcoin changes pretty much everything. To understand Bitcoin, you have to imagine a world where you can buy without a merchant, bet without a bookie, okay? Bookie being the third party, being the escrow, get insurance without an underwriter. Here again, third party, sort of an escrow, access finance and loans without a bank, Bank in most loans is the third party. They're handling the money between the lenders and the loaners, okay? Third party gets removed. This is key for almost all ideas that we're gonna see today. This explosion of Bitcoin has everything to do with the elimination of this third party and elimination of this escrow and the ability to actually put value inside a bet.